have seen and what our science tells us today is that most of the dry forests across central and eastern Washington, ponderosa pines specifically, um, traditionally burn every five to 20 years. And so when you remove fire from the ecosystem, you are removing an essential part of what it needs to be healthy. So today we utilize prescribed fire as one of the best and most cost-effective tools in our toolbox to put fire back on the land, have it play its role in the ecosystem and to better protect our communities. So what we're seeing behind me is a great example of the condition of most of the forests across central Washington uh, where we have a huge buildup of woody debris and we've got a lot of ladder fuels and what that means is that if we got a natural lightning strike or an escaped campfire for example um, the fire would start on the ground and then it would burn right up uh, up a ladder if you will up into the canopy of the trees uh, causing much higher intensity wildfires that are much harder to control and more destructive so part of what we're seeing today is uh, prescribed fire in action. And uh, this is a combination of both thinning and prescribed fire that can help restore dry forests. After a, a thinning operation, or sometimes even before, we'll go in and do prescribed fire. And what that means is putting fire back on the landscape to help keep it um, open, to help reduce those ladder fuels, to help keep the canopy raised and off the ground, um, to really help the forest function like it should, both for uh, water, uh, air resources, as well as wildlife, um, and prescribed fire is an essential part of that. There's different strategies and way to do, ways to do it, and they're building a pretty good black line. Building black means out from the road, they burn part of it um, and make it black, so that's why they call it black line, right? So maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 feet, they'll go in, there'll be a strip along this road of black. They want to build that up because what's going to happen is the folks that are working inside the, the unit, interior of the unit, um, they need that black to build up so then that they can kind of send fire that direction and it would be safe to do so. You don't want to send, you know, embers and all that kind of stuff lofting on the other side of the road. So one thing that, you know, you can do with prescribed fire is, is smoke management, which, you know, if the winds are going the wrong direction, you don't burn. If you're not getting, you know, if it's going into a community, you might be able to cut it off or, or end it early. But it's different than wildfire smoke, which lasts for weeks. You know, we've experienced that. Prescribed fire smoke might last a day, a couple days, um, and it's a lot lighter intensity, um, and then it will move through and, and be out of there. So much like firefighters in structure or in wildland during the summer, um, we are also looking at increasing qualifications and the training needed to do prescribed fire. Um, so when we have uh, federal, state, county fire departments um, all trained in how to do prescribed fire, the eventual goal is to see more prescribed fire acres on the ground and more of our forests restored through prescribed fire.